1972, Beaufort, South Carolina, was still a sleepy southern town on the Atlantic coast, with one high school serving its residents. The waterfront park hadn't yet been built. Downtown was still full of barber shops and auto stores. The first major chain restaurant was still years away. Only the oaks that lined Bay Street had seen it all before. By 1973, however, at least one thing had changed. Battery Creek High School, split from Beaufort High and made of students on the western side of town, opened its doors to roughly 800 students and over 60 faculty and staff. The early impression in the community was that Beaufort High remained on top academically, athletically, and in the minds of district officials. The evidence, collected over time, tells a different story. The first years were full of normal hiccups of a new school and a new building, though excitement was also in the air. There were also good sports teams that came out of those early years on Meek Point, including winning football teams and a state championship in baseball, with teachers and students still adjusting to the routine of being in a building with few windows and no home football or baseball field. As the 1970s ended and Battery Creek moved into its second decade, more success followed in both the classroom and on the court. Some people joined the school as faculty and students who would both become part of the Creek identity. It smelled new, it looked new. I'd like to think the teachers that came here were the cream of the crop, but that's just my opinion. Um, it was just an exciting time to be here. Okay, I started, I was at Robert Small before coming to the creek, and it was a different <coughs> environment. So I wanted to see how the other side of the world looked. So that was my greatest experience. First, uh, well, the whole time that we were here, it was really, you know, a lot of excitement. They wanted to be the best, you know. It was, they had a little song going out about you. If you can't beat the creek, <laughs> but I don't want to have the rest of it. <laughs> uh, I mean, we we'd had good teams throughout the, my three years here. Um, it's just that the first two years you had to win the conference to get in the playoffs. Uh, senior year, you, you took the first two teams out of the conference, and that's how we got in. Because you probably wouldn't have got in that year, because we tied with some of them for the best record, but some of them beat us twice that year. So, uh, so it felt good. We only had 11 players, uh, and uh, had two pitchers. So it, it felt good to be able to do that. And we played some. We were a smaller 4A school. You know, we had about eight, maybe seven, eight hundred students, and we, you know, we played the, the bigger schools. We were we we were uh, fairly successful in uh, in the girls basketball. We we out of about ten years we won about eight eight uh, regional championships and won two state championships. So we would say that we were fairly successful. Well, it it was great. I mean, um, that we had never won any type of state championships in any uh, organized sports. Um, I think they had a few, um, well, I would say team sport. I, I think they had maybe maybe track and field, some individuals that won state championship in their, in their event. But that was the first time that we, that uh, any school from Beaver County that won a team sport, and, and baseball is one of the major sports, so. Yeah, to me, to me it wasn't, I, I, didn't have, I didn't have any problems. I'm gonna put it that way. I didn't have any problems. So as a result, I got a lot of the <coughs> kids that were disciplinary problems with other teachers. And uh, after about two days, we would sit down and have a little talk. And, uh, and by another week or so, they would straighten up and we'd have a good time. Matter of fact, we have some of them now come by my house now. When they come home, they come out and we have a talk then. So we, 
one of those things, right? Uh, I came here with 75, um, like I said, it was about seven, 800 students. We all came from Robert Smalls, and we all lived from, from Grace Hill on back out to UMC, so that was a student body. So we, we went to, you know, most of us went to, um, you know, elementary and junior high school together. Uh, but we were, we were a, a good group of kids. Um, even, even now when we have our class reunion, we have a lot of participation. And, uh, and our reunions. Uh, we all got along well. I mean, that's in the mid-70s. So we, we had pretty good uh, relationships with each other. Well, my, my football coaches, because you know, we had Coach Demick, who coached the uh, baseball team. Then we had Coach Packer that coached the uh, football. And we had uh, Joe Scroman, he was the assistant football coach, and he was a head track coach. So um, yeah, we had good relationships with all those, all those people. And, uh, my junior year, we had a very good year. Uh, well, we had a good year. We had a five and five, but um, we had ten and eleven guys that made all conference first team. We just lost some some close games. The former um, coach here, Hank Rumpel, was moving to Bowling Springs, and I was having a tryout at Brooklyn Casey High School in Casey, South Carolina. We started talking. He said the job was open. I applied, and here I am. Um, I actually had a chance early in my career uh, to go to college uh, and, and coach, but it was very early on. It was 1985, and uh, my youngest boy, Colin, had just was just born. And I had Trent, who was two, almost two, and Colin just born. And I just said, you know, this is just not the college lifestyle with those two young kids wasn't going to work out. Looked at some different opportunities along the way, but I always kind of got pulled back to Battery Creek, and no regrets at all about staying here. I started in the school so that I could be with my children. And it really did give me the opportunity to coach them, to be with them, to travel with them. And so that has really made a difference. And then all of a sudden my grandkids start going here. And so it, my last grandchild will graduate um, in, what, in four weeks. So I'll be graduating with her. But it gave me a good opportunity to meet their friends and to meet the kids that go to school with them and to really see what goes on in a school. And I just happened to pick the best school. <laughs> Obviously. My favorite memory as a student would be just the fact that my, my band director always chose me to do everything. It was, I don't know, we almost became you know, real good friends, but he, at the same time, he was also my teacher and he pushed me hard to do what I was supposed to do. So, I think the fact that he did not just stop at high school, but he, he followed me to college. He would always come and check on me. So, he was a very good mentor and still is a mentor to this day. Um, I've been with 13 principals in that time period. Some were just temporary filling in to the, to the Real principal came in. They were just interim principals, uh, interim administrations. But there's been a lot of changes. The one thing that hadn't changed has been constant. For, let me say that first: is the staff. The staff will come and go, but their level of caring has always been superior. The the teachers really care about what's going on in your homes and what's going on in your life and on in your life. But they also are able to put their own selves into it. They just didn't say it with lip service. They shared their own resources and their time to make sure that goals were accomplished. There's a few teachers that stood out. Um, Mr. Haywood was here during that time. Um, Ms. Abel um, was a science teacher. I remember her giving me the only bad grade in the class, and so I'll never forget her. Um, <laughs> family friends uh, who were teachers, uh, uh, Ms. Stroman was here, and just for the record, I was not in her class. Um, Joe Stroman, um, and, and so there, there were, were quite a few teachers, uh, Coach Drafts, um, quite a few of them that come to mind. I think one of uh, one of my favorite teachers probably was Miss Parker. She would probably never believe it, but, but she was. As the 1990s approached, plans were made for a new campus building across Robert Smalls Parkway from Mink Point. 
the new site was chosen for its ample space and central location to Burton neighborhoods. Many lucky students and teachers were there for the transition to the new building. All of this growth happened as the school dealt with the unexpected deaths of students and their principal, John McVeigh. The dark times, however, coincided with the rise of Creek Wrestling under legendary coach Nate Day. Creek sports also saw success with football players who made it to the highest levels. Perhaps uniquely, many former Battery Creek students ended up back here as teachers for the next generations. Um, <clears throat> when we first moved into the new building, this building, we had empty classrooms. There was space everywhere. And when I retired, they were teaching classes in broom closets right. to have room. So, yeah. <laughs> now I know that's reversed somewhat. Mm -hmm. But when we, we first moved in here, there was so much space and so much room, and this was such a beautiful building. Yes. We got to come into this building when it was in hard hat construction. We had to put on hard hats to tour this building before yeah. we moved into it. It was, a, it was a breath of fresh air. It was a new school, new environment. Um, it was a new day for high school in Beaver County. Um, it, it gave you a sense of pride um, because we came from a school where there was no football field, there was no, um, well, there was a gym, but not much of a gym. And um, I think it was a very dreary environment. So. Um, it was great coming to, the, to a new school um, and we knew that the other amenities were on the way. It was um, a little intimidating because it was so much bigger than Robert Smalls um, because it was two stories and things like that. But my sister um, graduated from here in 96 so she was here. Her class was the first class to go all the way through this building. And I also um, was involved in a sport during the summer so I got to see it before it was full of students, if that makes any sense. Like I got to see it over the summer for summer practices and things like that, so it kind of helped um, not make it so intimidating. So by the time I came through, there were still um, rumors of the old Battery Creek and the way things were in that building um, with the riot cages, and people would ask those kind of questions, but I think that most people knew with the new building that it was a little bit better of a reputation. Um, I wasn't afraid to be here. I wasn't worried about that happening just because I also had an older sister who came through and so it wasn't. But um, I think that our school was growing and up and coming and I think that the reputation, I mean, we were better than the Eagles. If that's what you mean, you know. <laughs> Go Dolphins. <laughs> this is probably the nicest school community that I could even think about being a part of. The teachers care. The kids are really neat. They're unique. And um, I, I wake up every morning happy to come to school. And when you, most people can't say that, but I've really been blessed. Um, it was different because, um, you know, he was a leader and he was someone that you saw in the hallways. And um, so he was pretty active, involved with the students. And so when he passed, um, or when he was sick, we all knew because, like, he. I think he shaved his head um, early on, but you know we, we did see him in the halls and then we didn't because he was so sick and couldn't be here. Um, but the leadership um, tried to step up and fill in as best as possible. And they, I mean, they did as much as they could. You know, it's just hard in the middle of the year, in the middle of the season, and dealing with teens. Um, and the emotions that we have as teenagers and everything that we're going through anyways, and then dealing with that. And, you know, we also, of course, had a couple classmates die um, while I was here, and so there's just, there's, it was heavy. Nate Day, um, legend, uh, hate <laughs> what has happened, but he was uh, one of the top wrestling coaches in the state and really recognized in the National Hall of Fame. Uh, but Nate was just a character. He loved his kids. He, um, he won six state championships here. But the thing about Nate Day, um, even though he was a great coach, he was just an even better person because the kids loved him. And he loved his kids and uh, he, he was a legend. So Nate, when I first came here, I was still a kid. You know, I was 
You know, I know these kids think I'm old, but I was 23 years old, fresh out of college, and he and his wife, um, they took me in immediately and kind of treated me like family. And, um, Nate was famous, you know, for what he'd accomplished at Battery Creek, but there's there's the Nate that the world knew, and then there's the Nate that I knew. And he taught me a lot about not giving up, working hard. He, his work ethic is unlike anything I've ever seen. And he was a real champion for the kids here. He always defended this place, like, with a passion. And um, he, he was explosive. He, he defended. Um, I think the way he defended the kids, it made a lasting impression on me. Like, you put your hands or you come at one of our kids and we're going to tear this world apart. And um, just so I became very protective of that. And I said this before, the kids will realize this as they get older, but you know a lot of people, but you have very few friends. And he was my friend. Um, you got to talk about the NFL players. Uh, Greg Jones, Donnell Washington both played in the NFL. Uh, my first year here, a kid named James Saxon is in the NFL, and I hope I'm not leaving anybody out, but James was a, uh, uh, here my first year, 1983-84, ended up going to JUCO in California as a running back, and in fact, the last time I looked, he was still a running back coach in the NFL. Coach drafts, um, it, it, it's weird because I kind of knew of coach drafts prior to playing for him, and so I have an older sister who's four years older than me, and so, um, so I've came to Battery Creek basketball games four years prior to me getting here. And so, uh, to some degree, I think I've seen a lot of Coach Draft's um, coaching career. Um, I'd always tell people that I think that in terms of coaching minds, he's um, one of the best fundamental basketball coaches that you could have. Um, I credit a lot of my uh, basketball acumen to him. And so, a phenomenal coach. Um, and, and super fundamental. I tease him, I call him the, the, the Bobby, um, Bobby of Buford County basketball. Coach Trent and Colin, uh, Trent played uh, Division One basketball at Charleston Southern, and Colin played Division One football at Charleston Southern. Uh, they actually were both on the first region championship team we had in 2001, so that was kind of neat. We won 23 games that year. Uh, great accomplishment for them. and then, Actually, for the next t uh, 10 years, we actually won three more region championships and uh, got to Lower State with Charles Brown in 2009 with, with a really, really great team. And that was a great team because we really didn't expect that. Kind of came out of nowhere and got to Lower State, lost them in a heartbreaker. Um, it's just, for me, it's just to see, um, well, for me, in 2009, 2010, you know, we went back, we had back to back region champs. Um, that was our first time in 3A, so our first time in 3A, we went 21-7, but we also went to Lower State and lost in double overtime, um, about one, to a really good Camden team. And then the following year, we went 25-2. Um, in two years, we went 13-0 at home, so that's 26 games we haven't lost at home in two years. So to, you know, have the, the recognition to have, to be a successful athlete, and to walk into the gym and then seeing his picture there as a you know state championship and that's like you're a part of we are part of that you know that groundwork that that happened a long time ago so it is proof to show that um success can happen here doing sports you just gotta you know keep on working hard so it's, it's good to be a part of the, the success that happened even if it happened a long time ago it still happened <laughs> i think it being a smaller school gives more opportunities for it to be more of a close-knit community than what it was when I was there. When I was here as a student, I think we had about 12, 1,300 kids. Um, so it being like a close-knit, kind of everybody knows everybody, and the teachers are, you know, care for the students and all that stuff, I think that's a little bit different and better than what it was when I was in school. As a student, um, I enjoyed my time here. I participated in cheerleading, marching band. Um, I was also the manager of the wrestling team. So I did a lot of outside activities. Um, as far as classes, I was a part of the IV program. 
that we used to have and um, took, I don't know, I really, I took a lot of really fun classes. I had great teachers and I had a really good experience at Battery Creek. I enjoyed my high school experience, I think as much as any high school student would enjoy high school. Um, I tried to be involved in a lot of different things to help me learn a lot and to be, it wasn't just about building my college resume, it was about really being involved and knowing different people and um, being supportive in the community as well as through the school and things like that. I, I mean, they offered a lot of classes when I was here and I think now they even offer even more diverse things, which I love seeing. Um, we didn't have the breakouts and the different class classes like they do now, which I think is a pretty awesome. Um, knowing that I had class in the same classrooms that these students did, I walked the same halls they did. Um, the only thing different really is that we didn't have the Kate building um, when I was a student here. And so it was a little surreal. I also had some teachers here that were here when I was here. So it was kind of fun being able to now be a colleague with them. I didn't have them as actual teachers when I was here, but I, they were here at the school when I was here. Environment does matter. You know, when you come to a school that has leaking ceilings or broken things, it makes you feel a certain way. When you have a school that is kept up and maintained and is new and all the furniture matches, those things, those details make you feel a certain way. Um, and you all were there when the cafeteria recently opened. Um, the feeling in the building was very, it was palpable. The shift, the mood shift, um, and I just seeing you all get to see that space and enjoy it because it's a beautiful space. That's just one example. Um, our science labs are state of the art, gorgeous, um, and just having safe properly working equipment so that you can get the best educational experiences um, is something that you all deserve and future generations to come. So for me, as much as it's been an interesting process and very requires a lot of patience and creativity and synergy as a school team, um, I know it's been a struggle for some people, just that change. Um, it's very exciting at the same time. So. You know, we got another year and a half until we're done, but I believe we're going to make it, um, and it's it's going to be a state-of-the-art facility when it's done. So I'm excited for the community. The vision for the future, I would love for this to become like a hub where we have lots of things going on, you know, in the evenings. Um, we've got some really creative ideas on how the community can also use this space in addition to our students um, so that we are maximizing that investment. I think having the Kate program is phenomenal. I wish we had all of these programs when I was in school. Um, I probably would be doing something along the lines of what I'm actually teaching now versus being the teacher in that field, but I enjoy being the teacher in those fields. It's something that um, I've, I've always liked math and science um, and technology. So now that I teach uh, engineering and computer science, um, it kind of meshes well with my teacher cadet because I am a teacher and then those are the fields that were my, my favorite. Um, when I was in school here at Battery Creek, we sent students to ACE, which we still do, but ACE was more of the priority versus um, having those courses here on campus. So now being able to have those courses now here on campus allows students to stay at Battery Creek and still experience the education of opportunities that they may want to have as their career in the future. I know things happen and right now is a crazy time for people all over the place um, and that's not that's not any different at other schools but in the past when bad things would happen at other schools it was like those kids but when it happened here it was like that's Battery Creek and you know I think people see that differently now and um, it's the kids here man kids here are just different and I know they don't always do the right thing but when I see them as adults when I see them out doing whatever they're doing in life it's always came from Creek well first of all when I graduated from Betty Creek it, it showed me that I could go to college I could do uh, bigger things um, I wanted to get out of Buford but I also wanted to come back to Betty Creek uh, in particular to help out my hometown and my home school 
it's been fun to come back and see the teachers that are here, that were here when I was here. Um, but uh, it's, it's great to see how the school has improved. Um, it's been fun to get to know, I guess maybe also the students that, the parents that I knew. Um, uh, but just also just showing that Creek pride, I've always had it. So just, you know, being able to give back to my knowledge and stuff like that, just being able to help out. Because everybody in my family went here. So from my brothers, um, to my aunts, to my uncles, to my cousins, um, everybody went to Creek here in my family. So to, to follow the footsteps of my mother and my father, and to also, you know, be a part of some success is, is one of my biggest accomplishments. My husband retired from the Navy, um, and so we had been away for about 10 years from Beaufort. I started at Shell Point Elementary School here in Beaufort County, but then when I came back to Beaufort, I was teaching high school, and honestly felt the only school that I really wanted to teach at was Battery Creek. Uh, Chad Cox was the principal, and um, he was actually the wrestling coach when my sister came to Battery Creek and was the wrestling manager then. So I knew that working for him would be a great experience, so I interviewed with him and got the job that day. This is my home. Um, I always kind of think that, did then and think it now that it's always us against the world. And I love this place. I, I know all the faults. I know all the, the good, the bad, the ugly, that this is always home, always will be. Um, and one of the things I learned is that the education that you got from, from Battery Creek and from the public school in general prepared you for all of the experiences and all of the, um, and anything educationally that you could, could expect going forward. And so good opportunities to interact with um, not only the students here, the faculty here, but as a student I had an opportunity to attend basketball camps, Palmetto Boys State, um, and it was great to leave this environment and meet and see some of those people further on and later on in life. My favorite part about teaching just to see the accomplishment that the kids come um, gain at the end of the year from everything that we've done. I think just seeing young people graduate, go on to college, go to the military, you can talk about the state championships, the girls basketball, girls, I mean, uh, girls track. Um, obviously wrestling won, but to see kids graduate, come back and talk to you, um, that's the highlights. I mean, there were many great accomplishments by different teams, um, but I think just seeing people come back and, and want to see and want to talk to you. I, I find it a great, uh, I have a great sense of pride when a student from the creek comes up and recognizes me. And, and it happens more than you would think. And I don't always remember a name, I always remember a face, um, and I'm so glad to find people out of the community that go back to my days at the Creek. So it gives me a, a sense of, of pride and gratitude. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy because um, when you finish, you go to school, you finish school, and you think that it's, it, you know, your, your days at the school are over with. And it's strange that what you do when you're in school can follow you um, for a long time. Um, I would have never believed that my next door neighbor would have been one of my teachers. And so not only is my wife an assistant principal at the school I graduated from, um, my next door neighbor is, was my home economics teacher and taught me how to make Rice Krispie treats. I enjoy seeing students graduate. I really enjoy the graduations because I know what it's like to sit out there wherever we're graduating. I know what it's like to sit out there on those seats. So it's really fun to have taught kids in the ninth grade and then to see them graduate as seniors. Class of 94 were overachievers and so um, I think when it was all said and done um, we tried to create a good environment and try to create a good reputation for the school and um, I will note that uh, my senior year is probably one of the few years that Battery Creek boys beat Beef and I in every sport. So in terms of reputation management, we did all that we could do to try and put Battery Creek in a, in a good light. 
about like four or five of us that stay in contact a lot. Um, my class, we graduated 260. Um, and so when we can, we do try to stay in touch. And like I helped, um, being most involved, I helped organize our 10 year high school reunion. Um, and then our 20th, I just, oh my gosh, our 20th, I wasn't able to attend, but um, I'm still in communication with the group that planned it. So. I went pretty far with Rhode Island, went to Germany, and now I'm back. So it's had a huge impact on my life, just wanting to come back um, and give back. So it's left an imprint, I think, on my head and on my heart. We went through some rough years at the Greek, reputation-wise and administration-wise. Um, but the faculty stuck together. The faculty was always the core and the heart of this school. And as long as we were together, it was a very, very nice place to teach because we could depend on each other. But I would say the reputation is um, really good right now. I hear good things in the community. Well, with me, as, yeah, as I said earlier, I think Battle Creek gets a bad rap, and that bothers me because I grew up in the community. And I know, and I know what go, what goes on in the community. I also had a sister that taught 30 years in the school system. She taught at other schools, and she used to tell me about things that went on in the other schools. Wow! But you know, but you you know, if anything happens bad at Battle Creek, it tends to get illuminated and put in the paper, and you know. So, you know, I would just like to you know hope at some point that we can uh, can improve the reputation you know, at the school in this community. Um, so, um, you know, so, you know, it can continue to, to grow. I'm proud of Creek. So I wear my Creek gear proudly, and when I see people, you know, out in town, and they ask me questions, then I always tell them that this is actually the best school. Uh, it's kind of Buford's best kept secret. Uh, we've always gotten a bad rep, but I honestly think that we're number one in Buford County. You can, you can tell it like it is, I think we look for a lot of solutions to the problems that, yeah, everybody has problems. Um, we look for solutions, so it's not just people complaining, it's how can we fix the problem? Um, uh, I think for the most part, positive, um, and I think we're moving to the point where we are all working hard to make this a better school. But when I walked in the door, the very first person I met was Miss Vicki Farrow, who was the receptionist at the time. And even before I met her, I just felt, I love the front of our school. So like for me, when I saw those trees, and it was just very comfortable to me. And then I met Miss Vicki, and I, I mean, I met Miss Vicki, that's enough to sell you on the place. And so um, from that moment, I just, um, and then the kids um, started meeting the students, and um, it was sad to me because they knew what people were saying about their school. And so there was just this mindset, a very limiting mindset where, um, some of them just, I think, have this feeling of they didn't go to the best school and this was it. And it would be almost like it was a reflection of them, which couldn't have been farther from the truth. And so I just felt really glad to be in, an, in a place where I could um, just meet new students. Um, we had some good faculty members that really were dedicated. And, um, and so it was just a matter of staying here because I loved and it felt like home and um, it's been a very interesting journey the last five years just how much the school has changed um, so I don't know I could go on forever <laughs> things change tremendously there will always be people that say negative things about the school but in a weird way we need that we need that motivation we need that reminder that you know, we've never arrived. We're going to continue to try to work to get better. And um, so it's improved drastically, but we need people to continue hating on us. That continues to motivate us. Battery Creek means to me family. Um, I, like I said, graduated from here. My siblings, most of them graduated from here. Uh, my parents graduated from here. So I'm kind of from a long line of Battery Creek alum. My children go to school here and I, 
feel like my students are a part of my family as well. Um, I enjoy having the advisory group because we stay with them all four years. So my advisory group has become my little family. Um, I don't want to leave because I want to make sure that I see them graduate and see how they prosper in the future. Uh, the faculty and staff here, we all, for the most part, get along. Um, and we are a family. So to me, Creek means family. We are, we're the, we are the district's best kept secret. And that's a shame, but that's the way it is. Is that they, they never give us what is due us, and we do have a good reputation in helping our kids. We do things that other schools don't even don't even touch. They can't. They don't even address. We're not afraid to address address it in this school. You know, y'all won't. It won't resonate with you now. But when you're older and you say, like, oh, I went to Creek, it means something. Like, people don't look back and say, I graduated from Battery Creek High School. They say, I went to Creek. And it's a term of affection. It's a, this place overcomes. The resilience of the kids here is ingrained. And you guys bounce back from all kind of bad things all the time. And we just take it and we keep moving. Many programs have come through Battery Creek, including the IB program, AP courses, and currently both Weeder and Me and Cambridge International Curriculum. The school has also had at least two teachers become Teachers of the Year for the entire school district. Four valedictorians of the school have also come from one family. While academic and athletic success continues at One Blue Dolphin Drive, there's one theme that has endured at the school through different buildings and administration. That overriding theme is family. The contributions of many in our community to this school have, over time, taken a positive effect in ways we continue to see daily. Battery Creek High School may not have been the first high school in Northern Beaver County, but it remains second. Not.